Who the hell are you? What happened to him? He got bit. Bit? Oh, oh, oh. easy now. Ain't nobody needs to get hurt. Got it. And get down on your knees. We don't have no affiliation with what just happened. Tell him, Oscar. Stop talking, man. Oh, he's still in here. Man's got a point. Yeah, and I gotta check on my own lady. One guard looked out for us, locked us up in the cafeteria, told us sit tight, threw me this piece, said he'd be right back. Yeah, and that was 292 days ago. My kids. And my old lady. Yo, you, you got a, a cell phone or something that we can call our families? The fence is down the far side of prison. Every time we drag a body out, those things just line up. Dropping the body and just running back inside. Our deal is non-negotiable. I told you this was a waste of time. They ain't no different than the pricks who shot up our boys. You know how many friends corpses we had to drag out this week? Just threw them out like... These were good guys. Good guys who hide our backs against the really bad dudes in the joint, like Tomas and Andrew. Now, we've all made mistakes to get in here, Chief. And I'm not going to pretend to be a saint, but believe me, we've paid our due. Enough that we would rather hit that road than to go back into that shithole. All right, there you guys heard it. Welcome to Dead Talk Live. I'm your host, Viz, from Walking Dead Now, and it is my honor to welcome Vincent Ward, who played our beloved Oscar on season three of The Walking Dead. Vincent, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. How are you doing tonight? Man, I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Man, did that bring you down memory lane a little bit? Well, you know what? I kind of go down memory lane almost every day because somebody's always reminding me of The Walking Dead. So it, holds, it is what it is. Does it hold a <laughs> Does it hold a special place in your heart? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. You know, I was definitely honored to be a part of such a legendary show that I didn't even know anything about. So, I mean, it's it's definitely been a blessing to be a part of something that's. Uh, some that everybody loves. Well, I, I mean, it's become, uh, it, it, it broke a lot of rules. I will say that much about it. So let's start with this. How would you define the character of Oscar? Your personal take on the character that you played on The Walking Dead. I, I would define him as a family man, um, loyal, a leader, but can still be, you know, part of a team. Um, honest. It really, it, I'm really describing myself. The difference between myself and Oscar is I'm free and he was in jail. And I like, I like to say just because a person went to jail or went to prison, it doesn't make them a bad person. They just made a bad choice in life. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Do you find it easier when, uh, and we hear this a lot in regards to the writing that the Walking Dead writers, they write the character around the actor. Do you feel, do you, did you feel that, you know, after a couple of episodes, they really started writing Oscar, like, like you said, just like you, minus the prison part? Um, I don't know. I, I can't really say that they do unless you really and truly have a conversation with the person you have to get to you have to have a conversation with the person and pretty much interview them to see see how they are in real life yeah i mean like as far as like robert kirkman i i'd never met him until like my sixth episode so i i, I just pay it to they know what they want for that for that particular character Gotcha. So it's up to us to make it believable. Yep, gotcha. And we had Irony on the show like two weeks ago. All right, Irony is an awesome, <laughs> awesome guy. And oh, yeah. uh, you know, he's the one that said that after, I guess, one and a half seasons. Like you're right, you got to be there for a while for the writers and them to get to know you. They started mm -hmm. writing the character of T Dog around irony's personality you know what i'm saying yeah. so he has a great personality 
Oh, probably yeah. the, one, of the, one of the nicest guys I ever not only worked with, but I ever met. Yeah. Him and his dad. Just the sweetest people ever. Yeah, he was. And he was an amazing person to talk to. Now, your very first scene was where, you know, Rick and company find you and the other inmates uh, in the cafeteria as Rick is chopping off Herschel's leg. Uh, were you prepared uh, for Oscar's introduction into the show to be so gory in that first scene that we got to meet you guys? I didn't know what to think, to be honest with you, man. I know when I saw that happening, I was like, what the hell type of show am I on? <laughs> <laughs> Because I had I had never I had never seen the show before, I I hadn't you know heard of it or whatnot. I, I think I heard of it, but I had never watched it. So, for me, I don't put one project above another one. As an actor or actress, you're just blessed to be just blessed to be working. To be honest with you, I hear you. But I, but to, to come across something as popular as this show, it was like I said, it was definitely a blessing. I mean, it was your season. It was season three that if you ask the majority of Walking Dead fans, uh, they will tell you that season three was the best uh, out of the 10 that we have so far. Uh, how do you feel that you were in almost the entire first half of that season and played a big role in a season that literally launched The Walking Dead over the moon? <laughs> Hey, man, I guess the right place at the right time. <laughs> you know, even even with season three, I think a lot of the, a lot of it was still so, so secretive, you mm -hmm. know, you know, you couldn't bring cameras on on the um, you, as far as your phone. You really couldn't bring it to the set. Um, they just didn't want a lot of information to get out. And I respect that because a lot of TV shows are starting to take that same approach especially like marvel and all of them oh, yeah. I'm, I'm too late been doing it for a while but you know you have to sign disclosures and all of that but i think the easiest thing to do is to keep your mouth shut if the if the show that's paying you and that you're working for asks you to be quiet exactly and a lot of the actors and actresses mess up you know everything ain't supposed to be posted just surprise people sometimes you don't have to tell your entire life all the time. Exactly. Like that's what that's what that's the world we're living in now. Yeah. Everything hey, look at me. So Gotcha. I mean, I totally understand that. Now, uh in that in episode two where we got to meet you, after being locked up in that cafeteria for ten months, uh with Axel, Tomas, Andrew, uh Big Tiny, uh what was going through Oscar's mind? Uh like I said, when Rick busted in, you guys were there isolated for 10 months. And all of a sudden, this group just comes busting through those doors. If you were to go back into your character's Oscar's mind, what do you think he would have been thinking? Uh, fear? Relief? Someone's here to save us? What would you Def think was going through the character's Def mind? Definitely the lines that I said on the show. Um, I would think uh, we're, we're free. You know, relieve. Um, who are you? <laughs> Where's everybody at? And then when Rick was breaking it down, that's pretty much the world has changed. The first thing Oscar said, what about my old lady, my yeah. kids? So he was, that's why I said he was definitely a family man. The reason why he was in jail is for because of breaking and entering to um, support his family. Yeah. Uh, he must have stole a lot of stuff, but. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I say, you know, just because you're in prison doesn't make you a bad person, just bad choices in life. Exactly. So I would have been like, all right, thank y'all for opening the door. I'm out. I'm out. Now, you five guys literally had no idea what was going on in the outside world. I mean, uh, besides the mayhem and the guard giving you the gun and saying, I'll be right back, and he never shows... You guys never ventured out of there. You had enough food to survive. So you guys were completely clueless when Rick and the gang showed up? Completely. And and the thing about it is I wish that the show would have touched on on that more. You know, I wish it would have showed like what happened 
you know, where all the everybody in the prison was dead besides us. I wish it would have been like a little bit more of the backstory of how how it went down. Because once we went outside, that one scene, it was just like, ah, oh, the sun is hitting us. You know, we hadn't even been outside. We were still pretty much stuck inside the prison. Yeah, I get so, that. And uh, we're going to get to, you know, a backstory to that in a couple, uh, a little bit later on. Uh, walk us through that scene where Rick plants his machete in Tomas's head, played by Nick Gomez. What was the intensity in the room like uh, those two had a stare down before rick plants his machete into nick gomez's head uh walk us through that scene what was that like it was hype it was hype i, I kind of felt sorry for the the walkers who were playing the the, pe- the the extras that was playing walkers that day um because we were so hype and we wanted it to m- look as real as possible so a couple people got hit you know, it was some. It was. I think it was some complaints about us hitting them too hard, and of course, you never want to hurt anybody. Mm-hmm. But it was an intense scene. I mean, very it... intense. And and Nick and um, Nick did an awesome job going against the big dog on the show at that time. And that, so, and that actually leads me to my next question. Uh, while Andrew and Nick were shooting that. Did they have fun with it? Did they do anything to lighten the mood of such an intense no. scene? No. Nick was a madman. Honestly, I, I kind of didn't like Nick when we were filming the show because he never like got out of character. He really and truly thought he was the boss of us. And I'm like, man, who the hell is this dude? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you, you, you with me. You, we, we prisoners. <laughs> So, but no, he he was he was in character, and of course, you know, Andy never breaks character. Yeah. Never. I got yeah. a story about that. And um, they both were two intense, two intense guys, ready to ready to go at it. Well, you know what? Now is the perfect. I'd love to hear that Andrew story you've got. Uh, well, I, I've I've said it a million times, but as far as him not ever breaking character. I was probably, we were probably been working together for two months. And this is when Irony got killed. Yeah. And at the, the, the going away party for him or whatnot. And uh, I'm sitting there, me and, me and uh, Andy, Andrew, and I'm talking to him. And I had a glass of wine. You know, I, I know I'm a lightweight, but I ain't that light. I took a sip. And he started speaking in his British accent. So I'm looking at him, and I look back at my wine, and I look back at him. I said, hey, man. I said, what's with, what's with the accent? Why are you talking like that? You had no like, idea? I was like, what? <laughs> I had no clue that this guy was British. Oh, no man. clue. I mean, we, we've heard it a million times that Andy never breaks character on the set, but to have a co-star not know that he was British, I mean, damn. I had no idea, brother. Oh. No idea whatsoever. Damn. And I was shocked. I mean, that that takes the whole him never breaking character, the way I've interviewed people and our viewers who watch uh, the interviews. We're like, okay, the one, the guy's there, but I'm sure there must be times, you know, during lunch that he will let some, you know, break character for a little bit. You have to also realize, too, a lot of times it's hot. We're outside. It's, it's, it's hot, you know, uh Lunch, you, you want to get your food, go to your trailer and just chill and lay down. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a lot of running sometimes. So you don't really have time to be hee hee ha ha with anybody, especially with especially when it's somebody that you really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's an awesome story. And I've never heard it before. At the conventions or if we went out to dinner, we got to know each other more. But as far as everything else, it's like, hey, it's just like if you go to when you go to work, mm-hmm. you go to work, you say hi to your to you know your coworkers, and you get to work. Gotcha, gotcha. 
Uh, now, Oscar gained Rick's trust in that very famous scene uh, between the fight between Andrew and, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Andrew and Rick, and you pick up that gun and you shoot Andrew, who was your fellow prisoner, instead of Rick. Did Oscar make up his mind right then and there as to which side he was choosing, or did he have no doubt that he was going to shoot Andrew and he was going to pick Rick's side? Oscar read the script and it says shoot Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to stay on this show longer. <laughs> I love but, that. <laughs> but you have to you have to remember Andrew and Tomas was a little different from me, uh, Big Tiny and, and Axel. Yeah. They were like, you know, the bad boys. We weren't bad. They were like the bad boys, so I probably would have did that in real life, too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get rid of these guys. Uh, was there, did, did the writers give you any backstory as, you know, in regards to that scene where Oscar shoots Andrew? Was there any kind of hidden animosity between the two characters, or was it just like you just said? Hey, uh, this guy's in for whatever murder, okay? I know this guy's a murderer. I'm going right. to take him out. Well, I think it was my, I think it was Oscar's way in, into getting into the group, being able to put himself in a position to go see his, go see his family. And, you know, it was like, you got a choice. Yeah. Either go with this guy who got all these other people with him or just get rid of this little guy and go on about your life. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, in episode six, you know, a little lighter moment with the slippers. Okay, uh, I gotta ask you, man, when you're when it, that scene was done, did you take those slippers home with you as a little memento? I actually didn't, but I bought a whole bunch of them that looked <laughs> <laughs> looked like those slippers, and um, honestly, the shoes that we had on those prison shoes we had on were very uncomfortable even though i didn't really get to wear the slippers but anything would have been better than those shoes that we had on oh, those were some straight up bruce lee uh no patent 1960 converse <laughs> <laughs> that we had on remember converse used to have no cushion in that cushion i remember those <laughs> i remember those Oh, man. Oh, All right. Now, Lou Temple, who played Axel, of course, was also another guest of ours a couple months ago. Lou we brought up... Ago. <laughs> Lou brought up the scene where you and him were on your knees. After that whole Tomas thing, you guys were mm -hmm. on your knees, and Lou started to talk, and Oscar told him to shut up. Now, no. I believe Lou mentioned on how the two of you kind of talked about that dialogue and it didn't seem right with uh, Lou or yourself and I think Lou described that you changed it up how do you recall the story Lou changed it up oh. I was sticking to everything they said <laughs> Lou, my... <laughs> Lou had more say so to, than me because you know Lou, Lou's been in the industry for a while mm -hmm. for me if they say do it this way then that's the way I do it um, and I, I was still new. I, I didn't feel like I had, you know, the juice mm -hmm. to go say something to, to, to somebody, but Lou, Lou, he, he did ask and they changed it. And also Lou is the same person who shot, who taught, who showed me how to do that gun flip when I, right before I shot Andrew. Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, you know, Lou basically is the one that said the dialogue that was in the script did not feel right to him. And did you agree with him on that issue? I just went with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now let's go a little further. When you had that stare down with Rick, uh, was there any part of you just on the intensity that Andrew Lincoln brings onto the set and how just like he huffs and puffs and gets really into the character of Rick, was he so intense that when you were staring down the barrel of that prop gun, that a little part of you felt intimidated in any way? 
No, because I'm a professional actor too. So, no, I wasn't. I wasn't intimidated. If anything, I was. I was more hyped. The uh-huh. only person that was really kind of nervous in that scene was Norman. Why is that? <laughs> because he had that knife to my neck. Oh. And he was like, bro, please just don't move. Because, I mean, it was, a, I believe it was a real knife. A real knife. He, he said, you know, I was like, man, just, just put it there. I'm not, I'm not going to move. But, you know, when, when, when you go on a show like that, especially with people that's been around, you know, the whole group, you be on your A game because you know they're going to be on their A on their A game. Yeah. It's funny because a lot of people kind of think like The Walking Dead is where I first started. No. I've been around for a while too. I know. You know so I knew the Green of Thunder when I saw it in his eyes. And I and I and, and I've been in that situation before. Twice. <laughs> In real life, when somebody pulled a gun out on me. Damn. Yeah. One in White Castles and one in my own car. Wow. Yeah, wow. so it was like, okay. And did it's you on- did you pull in on that, your real life experience into that scene where you were on your knees and Rick was holding the, ga- the gun to you? Honestly, I didn't. I just looked at it like, it's me and him. And of course, Norman in behind me. But yeah, with a real knife to your neck. <laughs> I just looked at it like this is this is a great this is a great scene. Probably one of my, my favorite scenes that I've I done on the show. And just be real. Well, you just be, let you, him know he ain't punking nobody. Yeah. And you nailed that scene. That was really spot on. Uh, and your line, uh, you know, in the show, there's a line. I ain't never begged for my life, and I'm not going to start now. Uh, I ain't never begged for my life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, when you were staring down that gun, uh, like I just said, your portrayal was spot on. And the question that I had for you, which you just actually answered, was, uh, you know, did you have any of your own personal life input into that scene? And you said, no, you just, you, so to describe it a little further for us, you just pulled mm-hmm. back into your actor training, left your real life uh, events out of it and dug deep as how to pull that emotional, not only the line, but that look on your face was so intense. It was so well, gripping. Well, you know, when you, when you have somebody as a great, such a great actor, as Andrew, you got to come with the thunder, man. Yeah. And honestly, when, when I when I look back at it, I don't even remember even seeing the gun because we were Locked it was eyes. eye to eye contact. You know, yeah. eye to eye contact, and the gun the gun was secondary for me. Now. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> uh I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for that one. Now, were you guys, well, not you, but L- L- Lou, they gave him some leeway. Did you did Lou get any more leeway in regards to changing some lines around or any of the other cast while you were there? I think when his his death. I think I think he said something about his death when he got shot in the head. Okay. I think uh when he was Ain't talking no to Melissa, when he was talking to Melissa McBride, Carol. Yeah, yeah. It, there's no, there's no telling with Lou. Lou probably was back there doing rewrites and all types of stuff. So, <laughs> ain't no telling. Now the. That's, that's what uh, the prisoners from season three had no interaction with Chandler Riggs, Carl Grimes. Uh, do you feel that was because Rick uh, was trying to protect his son from being around criminals? But also once Oscar did endear himself to the group to a, to a degree, uh, why do you think the writers or the show... Now, this is purely your opinion. Why do you think they kept little Carl Grimes away from the prisoners? You know, he, he was around me a couple of times. The, the slippers, he was with me on the slippers. Oh, that's and, right. That's right. He was. Yeah. 
and the part where Norman was holding little kick ass. I was right there with him when Norman, I was actually standing right behind Norman. I mean, it's in some of the pictures, but our first, our my first um, time seeing him is when, after he killed his mother uh. and he came out with the baby. And I, me and Lou were so confused. It was like, well, who the heck is this kid? Cause we hadn't seen him yet. <laughs> Lou actually recounted that story to us. He said, you guys were called in on what was supposed to be your off day. You guys walk in, and the way Lou says it is, you guys see a kid holding a baby and a gun. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what the hell is going on? Oh, man. Yeah, I, remember, I remember the, you know how they take a... Um, a break when he take a, a like a couple months break or whatnot. Uh -huh. I remember kind of like ended with that, and all the commercials was about seeing Rick crying and falling down, and I'm I'm standing behind him again, and I'm, I'm looking so confused, but the look on my face was real. Like who the heck is this kid? <laughs> <laughs> So it was definitely that was definitely one of the realest parts for me because I had no no idea who the heck he was. Oh man! Now by the time the end came for Oscar on the show, I, I sort of touched on this before. Do you feel he was fully accepted, or did he take that sacrifice he made in his death for you know in after death to be considered part of the family that they had brought to the prison? I think he, I think I was fully accepted. Because a lot of the times, I didn't have any weapons. And I did say something about that. I, I did say something about that. Because <clears throat> I'm like, well, how, how am I supposed to be fighting people and I don't even have a gun or anything? And he was like, oh, yeah, you're right. And before I knew it, I had too many weapons. I had a shotgun. I had a freaking Glock. I had a damn pipe. I had a mis I had too much stuff. And then when it was time to run, I could barely run with all that stuff on me. Wow. So I was like, I, I got to take stuff back. So, Be but careful I think what I you asked accepted. for. Yeah, yeah, I think I was fully accepted when I shot Andrew. Okay. And if, if you think about it, I could have shot Norman too. Because mm -hmm. he was in the room with us, with his, you know, he, that's when he just had the gun. He didn't even have the, the bow and arrow, I don't think. Yeah, no, I believe he was holding his knives at you or something like that. Yeah. Now, now, you told me which was your favorite scene with you and Andrew, uh, with him holding the gun to you. Which scene did you have the most fun shooting? Um, I can't really say that I had that I have fun because <clears throat> it was always in. Well, I guess I when I told Lou to grow some balls <laughs> when he was. When Norman was getting on the on his motorcycle, and Axel kept on saying, "I can bore it out, <laughs> I can tune it up," and I'm just looking at him like, "Man, what the hell is wrong with you? Why are you kissing this dude's butt?" <laughs> and I have to say, when uh, the alarm went off and they opened the gate and we all ran towards the prison, because at that time we was like in a little parking parking lot or whatever you want to call it. And we were supposed to run towards the building, and Lou took off running. This, I mean, I didn't even know the guy could run that fast, and he pretty much left me. <laughs> oh man! Running that fast with these freaking shoes on. So I think that was that was a that was a funny time. And another funny time is when um, Andy was was carrying Stephen. And we were outside, and we had him run far with with Steven on his shoulder, uh -huh. shoulders, and he failed. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> Another thing, when Rick was trying to be serious, and when he turned around, we all had only, only silly hats and stuff. So. <laughs> and so he had to get out of his seriousness he's like come on guys so that, that was fun all uh, right we're gonna take a question from our viewer this is from uh our viewer summer on youtube 
you came on to the show, even though we were introduced to her at the end of season two, around the same time as Denai Guerrera. Uh, what was it like uh, with Denai uh, working with her uh, on the very beginning of her very long tenure on The Walking Dead? What was Denai like? Very sweet, very professional. Um, <laughs> I really thought I was her here. <laughs> Out the set, I'm like, you cut your hair? <laughs> She's like, no, it was a wig. <laughs> so yeah, the stuff looks, it looks so realistic. You just be surprised. But she was, she was, she was an ultimate professional. Uh, I'm very happy for everything that she's doing. I did just, I read today that her show that she was supposed to be doing. Got canceled before even get started. Yeah, yeah, that that's really... that's speaking to you know when you're when you're expecting something, and it's taken away from you like that for whatever for whatever reason. So that sucks. That that really okay. sucks. And you know, speaking of sucks, uh, I'm gonna bring this up. I read an article uh, to my audience a while back in regards to you and how you found out your time on the show was coming to an end. Okay, to sum it up, somewhere along the chain of command, someone screwed up and did not notify you that Oscar was going to die. When Andrew Lincoln found out about it, he got really upset about it. So what can you tell us about that story? I'll let you tell the story if you want to. Well, I, I tell you this. First of all, I never threw anybody under the bus like the article tried to say. I never mentioned this person or mentioned that person. I just mentioned that's what happens. That's what happened, you know? It doesn't take away that I was still honored to be a part of it. Uh -huh. If anything, I gained more respect for Andy for speaking up. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, it was an accident, it was a mistake. And to be honest with you, when you get on a show like that, they tell you how many episodes you're going to do. You just hope that you end up doing more. So it was my time. No matter how it happened, it was still my time. Did so, I think I could afford to stay longer? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And we're going to get you to that in a bit. But so they told you that you would be on for seven episodes and you got your full seven episodes when you got on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's in it's in your contract. You okay. know, it can go it can go either way. Uh, I think even with irony, irony was only supposed to do maybe three or four episodes. He ended up doing three and a half years. Yeah. Just yeah. never. You never know. You never want to burn any bridges. Mm -mm. And. And that one of the, uh, if it's the same article, that kind of pissed me off because it, it made me look, it made me look like I was bitter towards the show. And I was angry towards the show. And that's definitely not the case. I was upset about how the situation happened, but it's part of business. And like I said, I would never throw any executive producers under the bus or showrunners or anybody who gave me an opportunity because it could have been somebody else in my spot. Yeah. And I wanted to give you an opportunity right here on live TV to sell your side and not have your words be twisted through an article or be taken out of context. So thank you for And it, it, he was 16 who did it. It was from a guy that was like 16 years old. Uh -huh. The article was over in like Europe or somewhere. I'm like, yeah. what? So but I appreciate you, let, you know, letting me speak on that good uh, i'm glad i'm glad we got to hear your side of the story to that now moving back uh you got shot helping glenn get to the top of the roof of that bus uh but that you know that the main cause of your death was rick hesitating because he hallucinated shane who right. was actually your shooter approaching you and did not shoot him because he hesitated uh, so overall, how do you feel about the death they gave you on The Walking Dead? Well, I'm, I'm going to go back to my, my mom. So I had told my mom, I said, well, this is it. You know, I'm going to die. And she was like, 
I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I, I, wanted to, I wanted to give her a heads up because I know how emotional my mom can be. And so it took her like maybe three or four weeks to watch it. Wow. I didn't tell her how it was going to happen. I just said, this is it. And I mean, I knew she wasn't going to say anything, of course. Uh, I just, but, you know, I wanted to protect her feelings and not give her a heart attack. <laughs> And it took her, it took her, like I said, it took her like two or three weeks to watch it. And when she finally watched it, she was like, that's it? I was like, what do you mean? She said, that's how you, that's how you die? I was like, yeah. She's like, that's some BS. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't help but to laugh. But I, I wish... I wish it could have been more dramatic. You know, I wish um, maybe they could have showed me change or something like that. But, you know. You know, I talk to a lot of fans every day of The Walking Dead. A lot. And uh, everybody loved Oscar. And there's not a single fan that I talk to that will say, you know what, I'm glad he died when he died. Uh, everyone, everyone wanted more from Oscar. Now, would you say going this is in regards to your mom? Did you tell her, your mom, that you know what he died as a hero? Do you feel like Oscar died as a hero? Um, no, I I, I felt like it was just time for him to go. So you don't think you putting yourself in the line of fire, helping Glenn on top of the roof? instead of you going up there first and reaching out your hand and helping him up while you're up in safety. I see you as a hero. Uh, I see you as putting, I see the character of Oscar looking out, putting himself second and uh, finishing the mission, which, which was to go and save Maggie and Glenn. So in my opinion, uh, you know, you were a hero, uh, you know? So tell that to your mom that I said it. <laughs> I tell her, she'd be like, I don't give a damn what he say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, <laughs> now you know, a lot of people, a lot of people said they wish they would have, I would have played Tyrese. And I'm like, why? He, you know, Chad did an awesome job as Tyrese, you know, or they could have combined Oscar and Tyrese together. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, you know it's like, it was like, all right, Oscar dies this episode. Here comes Tyrese. So it was just like, eh, it's a little strange. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry, yeah, a lot of people did not like Tyrese's death. It was very, I don't know what the right word. It was like unexpected. It was not the death that he deserved. But that's a whole other story. Uh, and yeah. what we just spoke about, there was still a lot to tell in Oscar's story. Uh, do you feel the even same? This, even even a lot of people said, all right, T-Dog is gone. Here comes Oscar. Yeah. Okay, Oscar's gone. Here comes Tyrese. Tyrese. So it got, a little, it got a little weird there, if you, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I, got you. <laughs> I totally get you. Now, let's say Oscar did not die. How do you... Let's say he survived and he became a, like Michonne, you know, went through up until to the, in the present day in The Walking Dead. How would you think Oscar would be uh, in the present day The Walking Dead as opposed to the Oscar we met at the prison? Uh, how much of him would have changed because of the trials and hardships he would have had to face undoubtedly in that outside world? Oh, I think he would have changed a lot for the simple fact he would have been fighting more to still try to get home to his family if his family was still around. Mm -hmm. You know, I, who's to say that him and Michonne wouldn't have got together? Oh, Who knows? oh that would have been good. <laughs> Honestly, it was a few scenes with me and her, but um, they cut him out. Oh, do tell. Uh, do tell. You can tell. It's been it was seven years ago. Yeah, well, we, I mean, we just had conversations like on the way to that cabin. Remember that part of the cabin when the guy was in the cabin, he was asleep or whatnot. Mm -hmm. We had a couple conversations. We had lines in there. 
but they never they never did show the show that. So was I it? I think definitely. You have to remember, I'm pretty much a foot taller than everybody too. <laughs> <laughs> So I think I definitely, even 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 with Chad and, and Irony, I'm still, you know, pretty much way taller than them. Yeah, you are so a tall I, dude. Yeah, I think I would have been a, a massive figure. I think the only person that was taller than me was the governor. The governor was tall. David Morrissey, huh? Yeah, he was. He had to be about six six. Damn. Yeah, and I'm I'm six I'm six four like two fifty five. So I mean, he was like maybe six six, a hundred and eighty. Well, I think I think Oscar could have been a uh, could have been a powerful a powerful figure. So that whole Michonne thing, would you describe it to the way Lou's Axel with Melissa McBride's Carol, the way they were starting to kind of flirt? Was it the same? The stuff that was cut out between Oscar and Michonne? I, I would say yeah, but it wasn't as flirtatious. Okay. You know, remember we've been in prison, been in prison for a while, so this is like the first women that yeah. we've seen. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So I think it was, I think it was a, a little less flirtatious, and plus he was carrying a, a knife, so you know I didn't want to, you know, <laughs> get up with that. Well, carrying a, a katana. A, <laughs> samurai sword uh, so take us back <laughs> so take us back what was the audition process like um, I actually did it on videotape and the character's name was Mouse and um, it was pretty much me looking about me trying to hide something behind the toilet um, the guard catches me and it was a picture. It was pictures of my family. And he pretty much took the pictures away and threw them, threw them away. <laughs> so that was that was the that was the audition. And then the first day on the set, when we first got there, you know, I met the rest of the guys. Big Tiny was like, "Well, I'm here for a character named Mouse," and I'm looking at him like, "Wait a minute, I'm Mouse." I'm here. Yeah. So. Once again, it goes to a bunch of goes back to everybody being secretive because mm-hmm. a lot of times we we'll try to um, tell everything that's going on. I just don't I don't understand. I don't understand why. Why? Why try to tell the public secrets? Yeah. So I now, think that's stupid. Now, after you sent the tape in, how quick was the turnaround time that you found out you got the part? It might have been about maybe three or four weeks. They, because I got the call. It's like, yeah, you got a part on The Walking Dead. I'm like, all right, what is, what is, what is, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, and it's like, it's about these, these these group of people, and and they said zombies. And my first thing was, who the heck is watching that? <laughs> Come to find out millions of people were watching the show. Oh. And I had no clue. I didn't even know anything about the comic book. Yeah. But that the same thing happened to me on the show True Blood. Yes. I didn't know what True Blood was. You know, it's like, all right, just because you audition for a show doesn't really mean you know what it is. Yeah, of, of course, you should watch, watch it and, you know, to, to get the pace of the show or whatnot. But my thing is, once you get on set, things can change. The director might want you to do it this way or this way. Exactly, exactly. Uh, now, did you, uh, you and Lou had great chemistry on the screen. Uh, would you say you made a lifelong friend in Lou Temple? Oh, one hundred percent. We're like, we're like this. Lou is, Lou is my man. I just like I said, I just talked to him what yesterday because he was filming in Texas. Mm-hmm. He just he just filmed a movie in Texas, so he was telling me about it. But I, I definitely um, got some some good relationships out of out of out of there. And I had I created a, a movie called The Step Daddy, and I had Lou in it and um, Nick. 
They both were in it. Nick played a detective and Lou was his boss. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, definitely got some good good relationships. And plus Nick doesn't live too far from, from me also. So well, that's great. That's great. Uh you mentioned David Morrissey earlier. I don't believe there were any direct scenes between you and the governor. Uh, but did you get to watch uh, David Morrissey uh, do a couple of his scenes? Uh, and did nah. you, you didn't get to watch him. Did you interact with David Morrissey at all while you were there? Because yeah. remember, we were in a prison. They were in Woodbury. Yeah, yeah. Woodbury, you know, is a little distance from from the prison. So when when they were filming, we were off. And when, when it's time to rest, it's time to rest. So the actual <laughs> physical locations of the filming sets, you know, like as from a fan's perspective, we probably think, you know, they're probably right next to each other. But you're saying yeah. they're not. Where the prison was to where Woodbury was was not like 25 feet away. No. And, and you have to remember the prison was a studio. They built all of that. Damn. So it that I was in in the prison, I would just knock on stuff just to see if it was real. Wow! It, it would. They did such an awesome job of making it look realistic. You know, even the outside. I mean, of course, the grass and the rocks was real, but yeah, you know, everything else was pretty much fake. Yeah, yeah. And I've heard a lot of people on here say that they read the script when they got the part, and they're like. For example, the walls in the, one of the communities now, they're like, well, that 30-foot wall, that has to be CGI. And they go to the set, and there's a 30-foot wall that they built. Yeah, uh, and, and Woodbury is a real place. It's Sonoya, Georgia. Yeah. So all those buildings, all those shops were, were real. But, um, I mean, they, of course, like, to get in Woodbury when they had all the trucks turned over and the vans and all that, they had to bring all that stuff in. Yeah, that's amazing. So it, it's it's not just the actors and the actresses and directors and writers. It's the people behind the scenes that, you know, really need to get their flowers while they're still alive. Because if it wasn't for them, you know, and and, and the walkers, you oh, know, yeah. the extras that's, that's there at four or five o'clock in the morning, with the make getting in the makeup coming to to you know make everything look realistic they have to get their props as well That's it's a team effort. oh yeah it's a team effort. and going to that team we hear so often uh, about you know from both cast and crew on the walking dead how they're so welcoming uh to new people coming onto the show do you recall which cast member reached out to you first you mentioned you and lou came on at the same time was there anybody else that was already there a regular that reached out that made an effort to reach out to you and make you feel at home i remember a situation when it was the death dinner of irony and um oh, i forgot her name she played the mom uh Lori, sarah wayne kelly's yes it was it was actually both of their dinners and me and Lou was hesitant of going to the dinners because we didn't want to feel like we were coming in and taking their place, oh. you know, being a replacement. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Because like when they died, we came and she heard and she got on our butts, man. She said, you guys are coming to this dinner. We are a family here. Don't worry about this. Everything is going to be fine. And then that's how we end up going to the dinner. And did you have fun at that dinner? Yeah, because I found out that, that Andy was British. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> but just to see the love that they have for each other, like for for, for T-Dog, the, the shield that, that he used to carry around, they they actually gave him the shield and everybody signed the shield. Wow. And it was it was sad, you know what I mean? It was being it was sad being on that set and seeing people go. So, you know, you never take for granted your time there because it could be your time to go with you knowing it or not. Exactly. <laughs> and we you know, we found out a great secret. If you want to break Andy out of character, just slip him a little bit of wine. 
<laughs> I was thinking I was drunk. <laughs> I was drinking the wine, and I'm looking at him like, what the heck is going on? Oh, man. Another person who was like that was my man, Scott. Herschel, oh, Scott basically. Wilson. Oh, man. What a great yeah. man. He made, I remember it was this one line I kept messing up on. And it was killing me. It was killing me. And he saw that it was bothering me. And he came up to me and said, hey, brother, everybody messes up. He said, just go in there and you just do it and keep it moving. And I was like, thank you. And that's what happened. I did it. That just adds but, to the just what we what we've heard of Scott just being such a beautiful human being. Oh man, hey, Scott was the funnest when we were at the conventions. Oh my God, we used to have so much fun with him, and he was just man, he'd be always missed. He was a true professional. To mm -hmm. me, he was like a legend in 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 this industry. He so. was, he was, and I'm speechless. Too. I mean, he was a legend. He was here. He was such a nice man, and you know, mm -hmm. I'm so sad that I will never get the chance to talk to him. Uh, right. Now, you mentioned earlier about the a man too. <laughs> <laughs> now, you mentioned earlier about prison and Baxter. I don't know if you've heard. The original show is coming to an end in 2022. There's a whole bunch of spinoffs coming out. One of them is called Tales of the Walking Dead, which is going to be each episode is going to be on to itself. How would you feel if they did an episode based entirely on the prison backstory? And would you come back for that? Is that a yes? I had to act like I was froze for that, man. Of course I would. <laughs> Why wouldn't I I'd be a damn fool not to? Don't you think that would be fascinating? Look, you know, uh, what's, the, what's the guy's name? Uh, it keeps going from show to show. <laughs> Morgan. He's on Fear the Walking Dead. But yeah, Lenny Walking. James. Lenny James. Oh. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Lenny can't keep going back and forth. There's somebody else's chance. <laughs> And actually, the, one of the young ladies that's on the new Walking Dead, she actually played my daughter in a movie. Oh, which one? Aaliyah Royale? Uh, sure, I forgot. The little black girl. <laughs> yeah, Aaliyah Royale. She was with us a couple weeks ago, too. Yeah. Oh, she's yeah. awesome. She's awesome. We're on a short together. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I she didn't, I take that back. She didn't play my daughter. She played my daughter's best friend. She was a troublemaker. <laughs> I got to ask her about that uh, and let her know that you were on tonight. Uh, but, I mean. I actually had inboxed her when I found out she got the part and she never did hit me back. I was uh, like, oh, so she's going big time now. Uh, she don't want to hit nobody back. Uh, <laughs> I'll mention that to her as well. <laughs> uh, so you agree. I mean, an episode, uh, of course you would come back, but. Uh, an episode to find out what happened to the prison leading up to Rick and the gang getting there. That would be great, in my opinion. I mean, you agree with that, right? Yeah. Hey, that'd be great that she ever end up playing my daughter and she's coming to look for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Didn't think of that twist. I just gave you some Lou Temple. <laughs> 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 I love that. I love that. A little bit of Lou Temple. Uh, now, one last question before we got to go. Uh, I don't know if you continued watching the show or not. It's really irrelevant. But when you found out how they ended the governor's story arc with him destroying the prison, did you like that story? Did you watch it? Did you watch how they ended the governor's story? Uh, how'd you feel about it? Honestly, I didn't watch it. And... I mean, the only time I really watched it after I after I left is to see what happened with I saw watch Herschel's death mm -hmm. and Stephen getting his head beat in. Yeah. By by Negan. Yeah. Well, that was the only times I watched after that. And it's not because I'm not on the show anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to remember I watched it before I was on the show. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, oh, he's just hating because he wasn't on the show. No, 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 no. There's so many cast members that, yeah, it's not just you. Right. 
I, I like what I like. You know what I mean? It's just, and I'm not saying I don't like that, but it's it's other things that really catch my attention, like you know, Lovecraft Country and and you know stuff like that. I love Lovecraft Country. <laughs> well, that episode where Herschel died, Scott Wilson was the last episode for the governor as well. I mean, that's uh, it was either that or the very following episode where, you know, the governor came marching in, basically destroyed the prison, and finally David Morrissey met his end on the show. So... It was to show you, I was so hooked on what happened with Scott. Yeah. And that hurt my feelings, man. I was, I was sad. It was. <laughs> it was. It broke a lot of people's heart when, you know, the character of Herschel passed away in The Walking Dead. Vincent, this has been an amazing hour. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, we've learned so much. Uh, you were awesome. I want to thank all of our viewers for tuning in tonight and watching. I hope you had some fun, Vincent. Yeah. Going down memory lane a little bit. Uh, any final thoughts you want to share? Hey, I just want to say, you know, guys, thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for what you're doing, brother. I mean, it's you got everything all professional. You got your, the, the numbers and all that other stuff on here. This has probably been the most professional interview that I've done because you got everything so set up and going live. And keep keep supporting them. Thank keep you. supporting Ted Talk Live, guys. Only way you can keep doing it is because you guys support. And that's it. And, Thank um, you. Thank you. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all that. Vincent M. Ward. You got questions? I'll answer. I give you the real deal. And he does. I can vouch for that. Vincent will answer you himself. And thank you so much for that, man. That really means a lot to me. Guys, I'll be back on the air again tomorrow night. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until tomorrow night, guys, remember to always stay walking. Good night, everyone. Peace.